So there's a report that the Dalton trustees is looking to hire Lori Lightfoot, the former mayor of Chicago, to investigate Tiffany Hanyard. I have a lot of thoughts on this. My first thought was it was a late April Fool's post. I thought, huh? Really? Is this it? Is this the best that they can do? This was very surprising. We're going to get into this story. Laura Lightfoot, the former mayor of Chicago, known for her combative style and her own series of controversies, including strained relationships with city officials, a perceived failure to deliver on reform promises. Her tenure was marked by tensions with the inspector general, clashes with the Chicago Teachers Union, and challenges in addressing the city's deep-seated social and economic issues. We're going to look into some of Lori Lightfoot's record as a prosecutor, because at one point she was a federal prosecutor. Some people say that she was a pretty good one. We will kind of examine a little bit of everything, but we want to examine the optics of this story. So you know what? Let's just get into it. So you see right here, Lori Lightfoot to investigate dictator Tiffany Hayard for $400 an hour. Lawyers are expensive. So I know they put that there. I know this is a conservative uh, news uh, site, New York Post. $400, yeah, like that's expensive. So you should always tell your kids, be a lawyer, you can get paid. But let's move past that. And right here, she's the best they can find. Apparently so. Lightfoot, who lost her own re-election bid in a landslide last year, will be asked to task with probing numerous allegations against the self-proclaimed super mayor, including misusing taxpayer funds for lavish trips and the sexual assault allegations back in Las Vegas. A four Dalton Board of Trustees members have proposed appointing Lightfoot for $400 an hour, according to the outlet, as an additional legislative counsel because she is both a former mayor and a former federal prosecutor. Uh, shout out to Nikita, Dr. Nikita the Cloud. She puts here, I hope she does a deep dive for a non-biased standpoint. Hanya's former chief of staff, Nikita Cloud, she's been on his channel. So about that, her being a former mayor, I think at this point, if you have Google, you've been on YouTube, and if you live in Chicago, and the fact she did not get reelected, we can all say that her tenure as mayor wasn't good. I remember 2020 very vividly about all the things that she was doing, how she was talking to people, how she was reacting to the situation. Let's watch some clips on how she was performing as mayor. This mayor does not care about Chicago police officers, period. A Chicago 911 dispatcher is stirring up controversy, slamming Chicago Mayor Lori Lightfoot. I pray you're watching this because you're a disgrace and I'm tired of it. Just months ago, dispatcher Keith Thornton was lauded for his precise coordination in the Chicago police shooting that killed officer Ella French and wounded her partner. The dispatcher, who's a former Los Angeles cop, blames the rise in violence in Chicago on Lightfoot for police staffing shortages. Theft is up in Chicago and the surrounding areas. And in Chicago, there have been more than 794 murders this year, which is a 61% increase since 2019. Our next speaker is William Kelly. Mayor Lightfoot, you and I may have gotten off on the wrong foot. He thought that was funny. <laughs> he thought that was funny. That was kind of funny, but you know, my sense of humor is a 12 year old, but let's continue. Reporter, uh, WilliamJKelly.com. I'm a veteran reporter in the city of Chicago, Emmy award winning TV host, radio, print journalism. I should be sitting over there with my colleagues, but I'm, I'm standing over here because you revoked my media credential. That should never happen in a free country. And I'm at So right off the bat, not good not good shows that if this is accurate she does not like criticism sounds familiar asking the city council to take the media credential process away from the from the next mayor of chicago and the next superintendent of police and put it in the hands of the the constitution what you've done to the city of chicago I feel like this is more of a victim impact statement than an actual public comment. What you've done to me is nothing compared to what you've done to my city, the city of Chicago, the city that I was born and raised in, the city that I love with all my heart. I don't feel bad for standing up for myself. I feel bad that Chicago and young people 
around the country had to see two black women get into it this way. An ugly confrontation at City Hall. An older woman says the mayor lashed out at her in an angry face-off. The fight at City Hall caused the meeting to be cut short with highly debated issues still on the table. Natalie Bonke joins us now with those developments. Natalie. Corey and Don, the council was expected to vote today on the renaming of Lakeshore Drive, but that was blown out of the water when a handful of council members disagreed with the mayor. Madam President, we cannot adjourn this meeting because according to our rules of order, according to our rules and regulations, there were several Rule 41s that were posted <clears throat> that have to be addressed at this meeting. Standing up and yelling without seeking recognition is not something that's appropriate. We are going to, we're going to, we're going to Alderman Harris. And unraveling at City Hall after the mayor lost support. Does this sound familiar or look familiar with the situation that's going on in Dalton? The council meetings are going back and forth. Do we see a pattern here? Let's continue. For her pick for the city's chief legal officer. Then the mayor called Alderwoman Jeanette Taylor, who was opposed to the back of the council chamber. I'm like, lower your voice and get your finger out of my face. And so she did get her finger out. You see me doing this. And so I'm holding my skirt. I'm saying, get your finger down. She got her finger out of my face, but she kept screaming at me. Older woman Taylor says the disagreement was not over the mayor's pick, but rather the city's position on moving to dismiss a lawsuit by a woman whose home was wrongfully raided by Chicago police in 2019. The mistake was caught on tape. After the council meeting, the mayor released a statement saying in part, today a small group of aldermen brazenly created a spectacle and did a disservice to their constituents. As a result of their cynical actions, the city council failed to pass protections and relief for our hotel workers. When asked if the mayor is losing control of the council and respect from aldermen, Taylor said this. Every since COVID, you don't want to work with people. You pick and choose who you work with. This is not how the city, we're never going to get anywhere if we all don't work together. Does this look familiar to you guys? Very similar behavior that you see from Lori Lightfoot that Tiffany Hanyard is doing and the trustees are looking to hire her. One of my favorite Sylvester Stallone movies is uh, Demolition Man with him as Wesley Snipes. And one of the sayings that Sylvester Stallone says in the movie is, you send a maniac to catch a maniac. Send a maniac to catch a maniac. Maybe that's the strategy? That Lightfoot would know exactly how Tiffany Hanger thinks? Because they seem like they have some similar behavior at these meetings? Mayor Lightfoot, you're patting yourself on the back today for rushing through a casino that... 80% of the people in the new 42nd Ward say they just don't want. Um, we have, uh, you're saying that this is going to, if it's ever built, that is, result in tourism, result in um, conventions. But the real reason why we don't have the tourism or the conventions is because of violent crime. You issued a violent tweet, called arms, and since then we've had multiple instances of mob violence in downtown Chicago. We've had shootings, murders, mass shootings. You talk about Texas. Mass shooting here in the Sir, city of Chicago. Is there a question? There is indeed. What is it? There is Let's indeed. get to it. Let's get Absolutely. to it. Absolutely. A speech is not what you're In fact, you went to, to Texas. Let's get to it. You went to Texas. Please, please get to your question. Well, if I may I ask my question. You went to please Texas ask for your a question. gay and lesbian fundraiser, okay? I've talked to the, ta to the taxpayers, the voters, the, the citizens of Chicago, mostly uh, black and brown. They say that they resent that. Will you recall, rescind your violent tweet to uh, call to arms? No, let, yes him, let, no. Let, him, let him talk. The more will he talks, you, the more stupid he sounds. Please continue. Will you rescind your call to arms tweet in the light of the mass shooting in downtown Chicago? So, as stupid as you think that may be. So let me just deconstruct, Thank you, let me just deconstruct the series of lies that you just spewed, as you do every time you come to one of my press conferences. Number one. Our tourism numbers are off the charts. McCormick Place um, is about 90% uh, capacity from what it used to be uh, pre-pandemic. So that's lie number one. Lie number two is that um, somehow the, the call to arms, the call to action that I issued in the context of the Supreme Court's decision to overturn Roe v. Wade and basically 
turn back the clock 50 years time where women are not going to be able to be in control of their of their bodies no sir i will not I will not stand down. I will not retreat because women in this country are not going to stand for some unelected body to tell us that we don't have the right to control the circumstances. So a lot of people were clapping, but unfortunately, she lost massively in a re-election campaign. Chicago Mayor Lori Lightfoot is set to become Chicago's first one-term mayor since 1983 after coming in third during yesterday's municipal elections in the Windy City, earning just 16.8 percent of the vote. Now, the race was absolutely dominated by the topics of crime and policing, with Lightfoot's opponents posturing themselves as tougher on crime than the mayor. She said in several interviews this week that this is why she, lo or, I mean, she lost literally yesterday, but she said before that, well, it's because I'm a black woman and they don't want a black woman in a leadership role. So this is the person that they decided, or at least considering, to investigate the mayor. Now, I guess the first thing that we can say, they're not asking her to be a mayor. She's not being hired to be a mayor, which is probably a good thing. She's there to investigate. There's two different jobs with two different skill sets. You could be a great lawyer and be a bad politician. The problem is optics. The optics is extremely important. Is this the best person they can find for the job? Do they need someone who is deeply involved in Chicago politics to investigate this? I agree with fellow YouTuber Shawrain Burns who said maybe it'd be a better idea to get someone who is outside, who is an outsider of Chicago politics to investigate this, to truly have a non-biased approach. I mean, as you see in the picture there, there's connections probably because they're both in that area. If you want an independent investigation, wouldn't it someone who has no relations, no connections, no ties, would that be a better choice to investigate what is going on? I'm just speculating. Maybe the trustees believe that you need someone plugged into Chicago politics to investigate another Chicago politician, but does it have to follow party lines? Now, this is not a political channel. My channel is about talking about corrupt people, scammers. So I'm not plugged in or even have that much information about the politics the problem is with politics, it's really about what team you're on. So Democrat has to investigate another Democrat. Republican has to investigate another Republican. Back and forth, fighting, everyone looking for power. It's not my thing. I'm more concerned about the people in Dalton and are they getting the best value from the people that they're going to bring in to investigate the mayor. Now, I also will say the feds are still there and the feds are going to do their work. Regardless of what other investigations are happening, the feds are investigating and the feds are going to take this situation to task. They're just taking a long time to get it done. Many people who have criticized this, calling this like a fox guarding the hen house. And what does that phrase really mean? That is not wise to have someone potentially biased or with conflicting interests in charge of an investigation, especially given the complex and charged political landscapes both people are navigating in. Now you can see here, I put the poll out just a few hours ago, actually. I said, should the Dalton Village Board hire former Chicago Mayor Lloyd Lightfoot to investigate Hainer. That was about three hours ago. Had 740 votes right now. And we got 83% saying no. We can check out the comments here real quick. Why hire an incompetent mayor to investigate another incompetent mayor? This is the most ludicrous decision I've ever heard. Lori's going to show up in charge for 200 hours and say she found nothing wrong. These trustees are something else, man. She is more corrupt than Tiffany. Might as well have Brandon Johnson investigate her. I think that's the current mayor of Chicago. Is this a joke? Is this for real? It is a ridiculous notion because Laura will just find Tiffany innocent of any wrongdoing. Do you think she'll find another female mayor guilty of anything? FDR hired the first SEC chairman, Joseph Kennedy Sr., with the explanation, it takes a crook to catch a crook. That could be it, right? It, it takes a maniac to catch a maniac. That could be the angle. This one on political lines, having a, having a Democrat investigate another Democrat is like having a rat at your dinner table. Could that do any good at all? I'm sure it will be a totally legitimate investigation. So most people are not down with this. They definitely don't agree. But let's get into Lori Lightfoot's tenure as a federal prosecutor and her roles in Chicago police oversight. As assistant U.S. attorney, she was involved in significant cases like the Operation Silver Shovel, which aimed at corruption in Chicago. However, she faced criticism in a particular case where the courts found her to have misled a judge which I guess that means lying. I mean, misled, you're lying, right? Although she and the Justice Department dispute this characterization, let's check out exactly what that case was all about. 
But first, let's talk about her time at the Chicago Police Department Office of Professional Standards. Senior aimed to address police misconduct. She made efforts towards reform and was known for recommending serious disciplinary actions in cases in police shootings of civilians. So the first thing that could possibly be a good idea is if she's able to take down Police Chief Lacey. Regardless of your feelings of Lightfoot and how she handled the police during her turn as a mayor, if she could find a way to get rid of Lacey, that would help. Lacey is a corrupt cop. We have tons of evidence of it. Just Google him, check out videos on YouTube. He is a man led by his huge ego and his emotions, and he's a terrible cop. So if she can get him off the streets, I would take that as a victory because many people who live there are afraid of the Dalton Police Department and because he is leading it. He is the simp attack dog for Hanger. So if she can get rid of him, at least that'll be one positive thing. Now, however, going back to Chicago, some people say that her effectiveness can be debated. Her role as the head of the police board drew mixed reviews. Under her leadership, the percentage of officers fired increased, suggesting a more stringent approach to police misconduct. Yet, critics argue that the actual number of officers fired only increased marginally. But let's get into the misleading of a judge when Lori Lightfoot was assistant U.S. attorney. This situation revolved around the extradition of an individual named Lars Linsom. Lightfoot filed a motion asking for a stay that had been granted by the judge to be lifted, arguing that Lindstrom's appeal was frivolous and noting he was already in Norwegian custody, awaiting a departure to Norway. The motion created an impression that the stay was preventing Lindstrom removal from the United States, which was not the case, as the government's position was that the stay was mute because Lindstrom was about to leave the country. This action was reviewed by the courts and it was determined that while Lightfoot's motions this action was reviewed by the courts and it was determined while Lightfoot's motion was misleading due to the circumstances of her previously unblemished record a severe sanction was not warranted. The incident was considered a professional misconduct because it involved misleading the court by creating a false impression of the government's position. The court acknowledged that Lightfoot had been in a novel situation and received misleading advice from her superiors contributing to the decision not to impose a severe sanction, but to view it as a isolated lapse. But what do you guys think? Do you think this is a good move? Do you think Hanyard can use this as a way to shield herself from criticism? She says, hey, look how many issues Lightfoot had as a mayor. She's already showing that she will do whatever it takes to make herself look better. You already see the tactics that Hanyard is already doing, already trying to throw dirt, on her former boss at the township, even though the man has passed on a long time ago. What do you think about the optics of hiring someone like Lori Lightfoot? Put in the comments below. Thank you for taking time to watch this video, and I'll see you guys in the next video.